If you're looking to replace Adderall, the good news is that there are some really potent nootropics out there that can not only deliver similar benefits to Adderall, but may even deliver more benefits than Adderall. They're safer, they're less addictive, they're less expensive, and some are even all natural. We're gonna talk about those different nootropics for replacing Adderall in today's podcast. Let's jump into it. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Holistic Nootropics Podcast. My name is Eric, and I'm here to help you boost your supplement and nootropic performance. One way you can do that is by heading on over to holisticnootropics.com and downloading a copy of my free supplement buying guide. This buying guide will walk you through ingredient by ingredient on how to identify the junk being sold out there in the $100 billion industry to ensure that you only buy the best quality supplements and nootropics being sold today. Again, you can download that guide over at Holistic nootropics.com. Also, if you are new to the Holistic Nootropics podcast, whether you're watching this on YouTube or one of the audio platforms, please remember to subscribe. That way you don't miss out on any future podcasts that we release. And if you are enjoying what you're watching, if you're watching this on YouTube, give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment down in the comments below, and we'll continue the conversation there. If you're listening to this on audio and you're enjoying what you're hearing, head on over to Apple Podcasts and please leave the podcast a five-star review because it helps us show up more and the algorithm so that we can help more people who need this information. Okay, let's jump into today's podcast all about the different nootropics that work great as Adderall replacements. So why why are we even talking about this in the first place? Well, uh, anybody who has used Adderall or has kind of kept up with the news surrounding Adderall knows that Adderall there are some problems that come with it, you know? Sure, it can be great um, used acutely in the short term for people with uh, ADHD is specifically what it's used for. It's given to kids, it's given for adults, for adult ADHD, um, and it has been proven to be effective because what it does is it just blows your brain up with all of this, you know, dopamine because it is uh, an amphetamine, and so it will make you feel great, it will help you feel uh, laser focused, it will bring joy to, uh, you know, and reward to the things that you're working on. Um, The problem is, is anybody who's ever used Adderall knows that uh, sometimes it doesn't exactly work like that. Sometimes, you know, it can start off with uh, trying to help you get what you need to get done, focusing on specific assignments that you're, you know, working on, but then you end up, you know, really hopped up doing a lot of work (laughs) in a lot of other places. And for some people, it turns into an addiction um, and it can become a serious problem. And now you have an Adderall shortage where you can't even find Adderall to begin with. It's not being dispensed as um, as much as it was in previous years. So, you know, your local pharmacy might not even carry it anymore. So people are desperately looking for alternatives to Adderall. And I totally understand. The good news is, is that nootropics can be a great replacement for Adderall. Granted, I will give you the heads up, most of them are not going to include the stimulant properties that you get from Adderall, um, but what they can do is they can help you reset dopamine because when you use Adderall for too long, what you're going to do is you're going to desensitize your dopamine receptors. You're basically going to blow those out because you've you know you've you've overpowered them. You know you've you've put too much dopamine in the system. You've worn out. You've downregulated the dopamine um, receptors, and so now it just doesn't hit as hard. And that's where the addiction comes from because you have to use more and more. There are nootropics out there that can help um, resensitize those dopamine receptors and help you overcome that Adderall addiction um, and give you very similar benefits to what you were originally looking for with the Adderall. Um, But I will give a heads up that Again, you're not going to get the kick that you do from Adderall from certain nootropics. Some nootropics will give you a little bit of a kick. Um, That's why they're so useful, but they don't just work pharmacologically like an Adderall does. You do have to do a little extra work on your end, which is what you should be doing in the first place if you are truly trying to overcome, you know, whatever cognitive deficits, in this case, lack of focus, hard time focusing, ADHD, that sort of thing. Um, You know, there is work you have to do on your end physically and emotionally to help that, but nootropics are a great aid to help in that process. Um, And I have made videos about things to do before using nootropics that can boost your nootropic um, success. So I'll link that down in the comments below. Now, to start, let's talk about, you know, 
when it comes to nootropics, the power of stacking. So stacking nootropics is where you start to use multiple nootropics for the intention of a specific outcome. So, you know, you'll find out there, there are people who use uh, specific stacks in the morning to help, uh, you know, to help support energy and, um, um, and vivacity and feeling good first thing in the morning, super motivation. Um, there are stacks that are better later in the day. So, you know, different nootropic combinations, these can get kind of complicated because there are so many to choose from dosing, you know, is super specific with different people. Some people respond to one nootropic better than others. So what I like to do is I like to go for the pre-formulated stack. So I call these like nootropic multivitamins because you're going to find that they're formulated much in the same way a multivitamin is, but with all nootropics. So instead of, you know, uh, like vitamin A, vitamin C, um, you know, vitamin D, vitamin K, you're going to find in like a multivitamin and then different minerals, you're going to find nootropics. So my two favorite pre-formulated nootropic stacks, AKA nootropic multivitamins are MindLab Pro and NuCube. And that's because um, MindLab Pro has 11 nootropics, NuCube has 13 nootropics, and they're all natural ingredients. So, you know, that's not to say that I have anything against the more synthetic nootropic ingredients, but I feel that it's best to, you know, kind of start low, start slow. You know, don't try to... Um, don't try to go too hard, too fast, because that's when you start to run into problems with certain nootropics. So I think a, a good blend of natural nootropics you get in these um, can be super helpful. In fact, I use them myself and I find that they can be very, very helpful, especially when it comes to boosting focus, especially when taken earlier in the day. So both of these are going to include things like choline, which is, you know, your brain's natural uh that, that's your parasympathetic nervous system and your brain's kind of currency for energy. So the brain is using a lot of acetylcholine to, uh, you know, to boost things like memory, neuroprotection, focus, mood, um, to clear away brain fog, just to get your brain really going. It needs it needs acetylcholine. And so choline is the precursor to acetylcholine. And then both of these stacks give you different herbals like Bacopa monnieri, Rhodiola rosea. Um, they give you amino acids like L-tyrosine, L-theanine. Um, NuCube actually uses things like resveratrol, um, which help with uh, you know certain brain functions. Um, and then they both have different B vitamins, which are great natural agents for just metabolism, for just cellular um, working processes. I call it, um, you know, the heat on the stove that stirs the pot of nootropics. That's what multivitamins, uh, that's what the B vitamins are going to do. So um, a good place to start if you don't know where to start with nootropics would be the pre-formulated stacks like MindLab Pro and NuCube, and I'll put links to those in the comments below. So some individual nootropics that are really, really good as Adderall replacements. Well, the first thing, the first place I would start, and for those of you familiar with nootropics, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be pretty obvious, but it's modafinil by far. Um, modafinil is really the number one Adderall replacing nootropic. That's because when you put them head to head, um, you know, their, uh, their effectiveness is, is very similar. In fact, while, while modafinil is not specifically designed and approved by the FDA for ADHD, it's a, um, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, um, what do you call it? Uh, it's a treatment for narcolepsy. So it's actually supposed, it's used for wakefulness. So in people who are uh, severely sleep deprived, have sleep issues, you can take modafinil and that's going to, it's going to keep you up. It's used by the US military. It's used by a lot of people who are doing a lot of brain heavy stuff. It is a potent nootropic. It's what the movie Limitless was based off of. It's this, uh, you know, uh, it was this special drug that uh, Bradley Cooper's character used in that movie. Um, the thing about modafinil is uh, you need a prescription for it. Um, so, so for some people, getting modafinil can be a challenge. You don't want to go to a doctor and some doctors won't prescribe it because they're not really familiar with it. Although, I will say after doing a lot of research into modafinil, it's a very safe, um, it's a very safe compound to use. It does have its issues with potential overuse, but it does not have nearly the level of addiction that, uh, that, um, uh, that Adderall does. And it does not have nearly the amount of side effects that Adderall does. Now, 
if you want modafinil, but you can't, you know, you feel uncomfortable getting a prescription for it, or you can't get a prescription for it, you can get um, something called FL modafinil, which is, um, it's a, actually a more bioavailable analog of modafinil. Uh, you can also get a drafinil, which is the pro drug of modafinil, meaning that when you take a drafinil, it has to go to the liver first to where it's then metabolized into modafinil. So the thing about a drafinil is, although it will be turned in your body into modafinil, it takes longer for its mode of action. So, um, you know, some people do better with FL modafinil. Some people do better with a drafinil. You can also get FL a drafinil, which, uh, I actually think is more available, uh, to buy than a drafinil itself. So, um, you know, my advice is if you don't know which one to take, try both, see which one works better for you. But again, don't abuse them. You know, you use it when you need it. Um, and then you'll find that you are getting similar benefits to Adderall and it's really difficult to overuse. So the next nootropic that I think is great for an Adderall replacement is either it's two, it's either Alpha GPC or citicoline. So these are two um, these are two cholinergic nootropics, meaning that they are natural choline derivatives, which means that when you use them, they are direct precursors to choline, and then they get turned into acetylcholine. So you know you can get choline from the diet, from like egg yolks, beef liver. I think it's even in some um, a, a few vegetables, but it's mostly found in beef liver and. Um, egg yolks. So if you don't want to get your choline from those sources, maybe you're more plant-based, maybe you just don't like to eat too much of that stuff, alpha GPC and city choline are going to deliver the choline that you need. And you can go a little bit higher dose with these, like, you know, uh, 400 milligrams, 500 milligrams. Um, they are clinically proven to help ADHD, to help the, um, they, uh, really promote neuroprotection. So you're going to get a uh, better uh, blood flow to the brain. You're going to get enhanced memory benefits. Um, they're really, really good for learning and memory benefits. So, um, really if you just need to turn the brain on, um, choline is the best way to go. Um, now if you're not sure, do I take alpha GPC? Do I take city choline? Um, they work a little, like a little bit differently. City choline may be better, uh, at enhancing dopamine. So if you're looking for kind of an associated, uh, you know, an accompanied dopamine boost, city choline may be better for that. But again, you know, it's really bio individual. You don't know, you might do better with alpha GPC than you do city choline. I think either, or you're going to be fine. Um, uh, and in regards to ADHD, you know, the clinical studies themselves, there aren't too many, uh, that, uh, especially in humans that point to their effectiveness, uh, effectiveness at ADHD, but Anybody using nootropics um, who uses these cholines, there are lots of anecdotes all around the internet from people who can attest to using uh, either alpha GPC or city choline to boost uh, focus and concentration. Um, and, you know, it's at the base of most you know, well formulated nootropic stack. So you're going to find either alpha GPC or city choline in both mind lab pro and new cube. So this is a crucial, crucial nootropic to have in your stack. If you're looking to replace Adderall, let's move on to the more, um, the more synthetic nootropic. So we're talking about racetams. So racetams are the original tropics, uh, specifically paracetam, uh, was developed in the 1970s, and so that was the that was really the first actual nootropic that was labeled a nootropic. And so from there, you get uh, you get derivatives of paracetam. So some that are really good for uh, ADHD specifically, uh, paracetam is good, oxiracetam, aniracetam, and pramiracetam all have shown promise in helping with attention deficits. So. Um, you know, the big thing is, is that even though they are derivatives of each other, they all belong to the same family. They each have a unique ability, um, to help different areas of cognition. And so this is why, you know, if you don't do well with one, it means all hope is lost with the others. You know, they all work a little differently. Some people will use like a little bit of each one, which I don't think is great because you don't really know what's working. Um, but you know, specifically aniracetam is known to increase hippocampal acetylcholine, serotonin, glutamate, and dopamine levels. So that means you're going to get more neurotransmitters, which is very useful in, uh, in helping ADHD focus concentration. Pramiracetam increases high affinity choline uptake, which means you're going to get more acetylcholine synthesis. So this is good to take with one of those choline nootropics. So like an alpha GPC or acetylcholine 
acetylcholine. Um, oxiracetam has demonstrated the ability to boost some signaling pathways. So this is kind of like uh, the behind the scenes stuff. So instead of blowing out, you know, blowing up your neurotransmitters, this is going to help those get to the right places. And paracetam increases acetylcholine flow in the brain. And as someone who uses paracetam, I can tell you that when I use paracetam, I do get not a kick, but I do get a boost in my ability to stay focused on something. So the important thing to remember is maybe you might feel like, you know, when you're looking for a stimulant, you're looking for like a little bit of a buzz, a little bit of a stimulant buzz. You're not going to get those from nootropics, not even from the racetams, but what you will notice is an increased desire to just stay focused on a thing, um, which I think is super, super interesting, especially when you feel it for the first time, you'll, you'll understand what I'm saying. Um, so, you know, people have different experiences, uh, experiences with these compounds. They're not my initial go-to, but having used them sparingly, I use, you know, aracetam once a week or so, just when I know I need to get intense work done. Um, bio-individuality at the end of the day. Um, some more natural nootropics that are super helpful, L-carnitine uh, has been shown to directly lower ADHD in placebo-controlled trials in children and adolescents. Phosphatidylserine, uh, there is some evidence for ADHD treatment. They have shown several um, human trials showing phosphatidylserine's ability to improve conditions of ADHD in children. So there was a double-blind placebo-controlled trial in 36 children aged four to 14 years old, given 200 mg of phosphatidylserine a day, showed significant improvements in ADHD symptoms, short-term memory, and focus parameters. Also, phosphatidylserine was uh, demonstrated in a double-blind placebo-controlled trial with 300 children, um, and that was when it was actually paired with omega-3. So if you take phosphatidylserine, pair it with omega-3, uh, this was what was studied in this specific trial. In this trial, 150 kids took the PSO3 combination um, for 15 weeks, saw significant benefits, and then they took the 150 kids that were on the placebo, gave the PSO3 to them for 15 weeks, and then they saw the ADHD improvements. And that was all versus the placebo. So the kids on the PSO3 uh, saw significant improvements, whereas the placebo kids did not. And then they took the placebo kids, put them on the phosphatidylserine um, omega-3 uh, dose, and then they saw ADHD improvements. So um, you also see ADHD improvements when, uh, in magnesium and vitamin D. So you can use these separately, but um, they have been studied together specifically uh, to show the improvements in ADHD symptoms. So uh, that is magnesium, vitamin D. And with magnesium, magnesium is just a good one to take um, anyways because it helps modulate the neurotransmitters and work synergistically with most everything else. So um, magnesium is implicated in over 300 metabolic processes. So it's a cofactor. So it's kind of there in the background, but without it, you're going to miss a lot of steps in um, you know producing neurotransmitters and you know keeping the brain uh, you know kind of at ease and really the body at ease altogether. Um, so if you are thinking like, hey, all of those sound great, how do I take them? I think that really if you're gonna stack, if you're gonna make your own stack. You know, the, the racetams can be, you know, kind of iffy, meaning like they're a little harder to find and, you know, they're synthetic and they might impact people differently. But what I think is really a slam dunk is using phosphatidylserine, um, carnitine and magnesium in whatever stack you do. So if you say, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to try this paracetam thing for a couple weeks and see if that works. Well, if you also pair that with phosphatidylserine, carnitine and magnesium, you might get better results because all of those have been shown to help ADHD, um, in, uh, in isolation. But I do feel that because they are, you know, they are really kind of baseline nootropics. Phosphatidylserine is a uh, phospholipid in cellular membranes. Carnitine helps with um, fat metabolism. So it's a powerful cofactor. And magnesium is just something you need more of in your body, regardless of what you're trying to do. So I think if you if you stack those with whatever else you're gonna use, whether it's choline, whether it's um, aracetam, and if you do use aracetam, you do want to 
also pair that with a choline source because the racetams can deplete uh, acetylcholine very quickly. It can burn through it very quickly. So you you know, kind of a rule of thumb, you do want to use choline with uh, aracetam. So you can see how this can get a little confusing, which is why I go back again to the power of using a pre-formulated stack like MindLab Pro or NuCube. Some people like Alpha Brain, some people like Qualia Mind, but my two main choices are NuCube and uh, MindLab Pro. Um, so you can see, regardless of what you've uh, of what you take away from this, you can see there are some very very impressive. Adderall replacing nootropics that have been studied in humans and shown to help symptoms of ADHD, which is what you're trying to get with Adderall in the first place. Now, if you're looking to replace Adderall for like a party drug or something like that, now I don't recommend any nootropics for that. Although there are nootropics that can make you more uh, social at a party and uh, you know give you some more joy and things like that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about Adderall for ADHD. So um, I also have a full article with all the scientific references and even more nootropics that I'm mentioning uh, re and reviewing for Adderall replacement. I'll link that here in the description below. So I'd love to know what you think. What is your Adderall situation right now? How are you replacing Adderall? Are you using nootropics? Did you kick Adderall? Are you looking for nootropics to kick Adderall? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Again, head on over to holisticnootropics.com and download that supplement buying guide. And that's all for today, everybody. I'll catch you on the next video, next podcast. Take care. Love each other. Peace.